Good evening and welcome to Grace Church Cathedral. This is evening prayer and reflection for Thursday, the 15th of February. Evening prayer begins on page 117. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 37, verses 19 through 42. God protects the lives of the upright. Their heritage will last forever. They shall not be put to shame in evil days. In time of famine their food shall not fail. But all the wicked shall perish, and all the enemies of the Lord. They are like the beauty of the meadows. They shall vanish, they shall vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow without repaying, but the just are generous and give. Those blessed by the Lord shall own the land but those who are cursed shall be destroyed. The Lord guards the steps of the upright and favors the path that they take. Though they stumble, they shall never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. I was young and now I am old, but I have never seen the just forsaken, nor their children begging for bread. All the day they are generous and lend, and their children become a blessing. Then turn away from evil and do good, and you shall have a home forever. For the Lord loves justice and will never forsake the faithful. The unjust shall be wiped out forever and the children of the wicked destroyed. The just shall inherit the land and shall live forever. The mouths of the just speak wisdom and their lips say what is right. The law of their God is in their heart. Their steps shall be saved from stumbling. The wicked are watching for the just and seeking occasion to destroy them. The Lord will not leave them undefended, nor let them be condemned when they are judged. Then wait for the Lord, keep to God's way. It is God who will free you from the wicked, raise you up to possess the land, and see the wicked destroyed. I have seen the wicked triumphant, towering like the cedars of Lebanon. I passed by again, they were gone. I searched, they could not be found. See the just and mark the upright. A future lies in store for the peaceful, but sinners shall all be destroyed. No future lies in store for the wicked. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord, their stronghold in time of distress. The Lord helps them and delivers them and saves them, for their refuge is in God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. A prayer of the prophet Habakkuk according to Shigidnoth. O Lord, I have heard of your renown. I stand in awe, O Lord, of your work. In our own time, revive it. In our own time, make it known. In wrath, may you remember mercy. God came from Taman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. The brightness was like the sun. Rays came forth from his hand, where his power lay hidden. Before him went pestilence, and plague followed close behind. He stopped and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The eternal mountains were shattered. Along his ancient pathways, the everlasting hills sank low. 
I saw the tents of Cushan under affliction, the tent curtains of the land of Midian trembled. Was your wrath against the rivers, O Lord, or your anger against the rivers, or your rage against the sea, when you drove your horses, your chariots, to victory? You brandished your naked bow, sated where the hour, were the arrows at your command. You split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and writhed. A torrent of water swept by. The deep gave forth its voice. The sun raised high its hands. The moon stood still in its exalted place at the light of your arrows speeding by, at the gleam of your flashing spear. In fury you trod the earth, in anger you trampled the nations. You came forth to save your people, to save your anointed. You crushed the head of the wicked house, laying it bare from foundation to roof. You pierced with his own arrows the head of his warriors, who came like a whirlwind to scatter us, gloating as if ready to devour the poor who were in hiding. You trampled the sea with your horses, churning the mighty waters. I hear and I tremble within. <clears throat> my lips quiver at the sound. Rottenness enters into my bones and my steps tremble beneath me. I wait quiet, quietly for the day of calamity to come upon the, the people who attack us. Though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold, and there is no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exult in the God of my salvation. The word of the Lord. Welcome to Lent, y'all. So, we have this reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk the day after Ash Wednesday. So we have just entered the season of Lent. And one of the things that I am absolutely drawn to in this particular reading from Habakkuk is the way that it ends. You have all of this sort of, you know, this imagery of God uh, delivering the people from Egypt and, and making a path through the Red Sea and triumphing over those who would persecute God's chosen people. And then it winds up by saying, though the fig tree does not blossom, Though no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fail, fails, so on and so forth, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in the God of my salvation. And one of the things that I'm always drawn to when, when we come across language like this, especially during the season of Lent, is this idea that we are supposed to rejoice in God's presence, that we are meant to be joyful. Lent is typically seen as a season of penitence, as a season of sort of, you know, um, making atonement for our sins and beating our breasts and wailing and lamenting all of the wickedness of, of our lives. But actually the whole idea behind Lent, the whole thrust of the season of Lent, is to prepare us for the joy of Easter. Some of you might know the rule of St. Benedict, the rule of, uh, for monastic communities that was written in the 6th century what a lot of people consider the Dark Ages. And some people think that, you know, monastic rules that were written in the medieval period were very severe, they were very harsh. And there's a lot in the Rule of St. Benedict that can be sort of uh, interpreted as being very severe and very strict and very harsh. There is one place in the Rule of St. Benedict that mentions the word joy. It's in the chapter on the observance of Lent. How about that? And it's the whole idea behind Lent is that if we observe Lent in the proper way, if our hearts are turned in the proper direction, we can approach Easter and celebrate it with true joy and, and greet the Easter proclamation of Christ being risen with true joy in our hearts. And the whole idea that Habakkuk gets at is that no matter how dark the world seems to be, no matter how dark our own lives seems to be, no matter what sort of calamity might be going on around us, we still can have joy. Joy can still be very much in our hearts, and that, that's something we cannot lose. It's a wonderful reminder of us during this Lenten season, because if, if we get sort of bogged down in the uh, details of our Lenten disciplines, we can lose sight of why those disciplines are in place for us in the first place. All of the extra things that we might take on, things like prayer, things like reading scripture, things like giving to those in need, things like using our time to help those who are less fortunate than we are. If all of that becomes an end in itself and we lose sight of the reason why we're doing those activities, to open our hearts, to, to uh, stretch ourselves a little bit more fully so that joy can enter into our hearts, 
if we're getting lost in the details, we're losing sight of what really what, what those activities are for. The whole purpose of the Lenten season for us is to expand our hearts in joy. Yes, we might be going through difficulty. Yes, things might be hard for us, but there might be a struggle, there might be some extra discipline that we're taking on ourselves that makes life a little bit more difficult. But if the aim is joy, if the aim is joy, that's what the purpose of our calling as Christians is, is to spread joy, is to spread joy in the world and help everyone to understand that the God who loves us loves them too, and the God that has come to save us has saved them too has saved the entire world. And so if we can remember that joy is at the absolute bedrock center of who we are and what we're supposed to be, then whatever is going on around us, whatever the world might throw at us, whatever discipline we might have taken on ourselves, all of that can be redirected and grounded in the joy that we are meant to have in our hearts. And so I think that this reading from Habakkuk is an excellent way for us to get into the season of Lent to remind us that joy is at the center of who we are and what we're about. And for that, we can say thanks be to God. We continue with the Song of Mary, the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed, the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. 
Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. At this time, I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Life is short, and we have but little time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this journey with us. So be quick to love and hasten to show kindness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.